this is Tom from anti-proton.com. I have just finished um, calculating an experiment on a banana, but that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is radioactive units and a few other little things. So let me put this away. Just for giggles though, I thought you might get a kick out of it. Here's my Geiger counter. I just finished a test on a set of bananas. And this was a preliminary to test to see whether it was worth investigating testing them more. And I actually did find that the bananas were three uh, counts per minute on average higher. And that's only 108% though of a normal background reading, so that's getting within barely within the operable ranges. Although I might be willing to test it because my Geiger counter is well it's been calibrated in the last uh, what was it, ten days? So it might be accurate enough to do it. But anyway, that's a separate adventure entirely. Let me uh, erase that and let's get into units. Let me tell you why this is important. This is why it's important. The CD version, CDV, 715, 720, 710, piles of these civil defense Geiger counters. I keep seeing them on YouTube, and I keep seeing people holding up a CDV 17, and either they show nothing, and they say there's nothing happening, or they show wild clicks on it, and they say there's a bunch happening. Problem. The CDV 700, the 700, is a Geiger counter with a Geiger Mueller tube. It is a little cylindrical tube that detects radiation. It's similar to the way that this unit here works, except that it has a wide pancake tube. It's the exact same technology. The CDV 700 is a Geiger counter. It can detect radiation and it can, it can detect low level radiation. That's the important part, low level. You see, one click per minute, one count if you will, a hundred, even a thousand, are considered low level according to science. Now, I consider them high level. Don't get me wrong, don't misread this, this video. I'm not trying to say a thousand counts per minute is nothing. That's a lot, you don't want to be around it all the time. But according to science, it's considered low level because in reality, you can get millions of counts per minute with the higher level stuff. So the CDV 700 is good for, for, for detecting things like this. It's not great, it's an old old unit and it needs to be calibrated and all that other stuff, but it can do it. It's always better to buy a newer one. But the CDV 715, the 720, the 710, the 717, all these various little numbers up here are called ionization detectors. They are not Geiger counters. And I'm not just throwing this off and saying that they're just, they're just a little bit different or they're just called something different. They really are not Geiger counters. They have a totally different technology. Their technology works very similarly to how your smoke alarm works. They have an ion t chamber, and when radiation goes through the ion chamber, it, it uh, um, ionizes the gas inside and forms electrical pulse or current, if you like. And in some ways that is similar to a Geiger counter, but it's not quite the same. Ionization chambers, and there's their biggest biggest piece right here, it takes a hell of a lot of radiation to set one off. A Geiger counter can detect tiny, tiny little bits, you know, a few hundred kilo, kilo electron volts, just one little tiny particle flying through, not an ion chamber. You need to be slammed with big radiation for that to work. Now, let me discuss the units. Oops, I need to get a uh, eraser. I have one on my other whiteboard in my other room, but I didn't bring it in. This unit right here, that big letters, and it's usually accompanied with this. Röntgen, roll your R's, or of course if you're from America you'll call it a Röntgen, or a, 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 what, what have I heard of, I've heard Röntgen, uh, Röntgen, uh, a couple other ones, but anyway, technically speaking it's Röntgen, a little tiny bit of a roll R right there. It's not Röntgen or something like that, okay? The Röntgen is roughly equivalent to a REM when discussing alpha, oh sorry, alpha, when discussing gamma and beta radiation, and it is roughly equivalent to a RAD, and I'll explain the differences are in a minute. They're not the same thing. They're, they are different, but they're generally quite agreeable. The Röntgen is an old unit of measurement for radiation that a lot of scientists used in the olden days. A lot of people in America still use it. It's very common in America. Now let me show you on my Geiger counter here. <clears throat> If you switch to this mode up here, we're measuring in millirankins. 
See? Miller Rankins. Thousands of a Rankin. Very, 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 very common in, in, in America. This has been superseded, of course, by the Sievert and the Gray. Um, it's hard to actually describe what this is. A Rankin, one Rankin, is equal to... Oh, what was it? I have it written down here. I don't use Rankins. They're old as hell. I got it written down right here. It's equal to 258... This is why it's so stupid. Micro comes per kilogram. There. So, 258 uh, times 10 to the negative fourth comes per kilogram. Yeah, it's not easy. It's kind of like a mile and a foot. I like miles, I like feet, don't get me wrong. I'm an American, I like miles and feet, whatever. You know, Europeans hate me. But realistically speaking, 5,280 feet, which are each individually 12 inches, are not easy to do math with. Meters and, and the uh, SI system is significantly more easy to do uh, math with. But of course, I like miles and feet. Same thing works with this. It's actually hard as hell to do math with this. It's hard as hell to understand anything with it. The biggest problem is its units of, uh, of freedom are um, current... Time, mass, current, Ugh. useless. Now, to give you some ideas here, this is roughly equivalent to a rad. It is not exactly one rad, but it is almost one rad. It is close enough that we can just call it a rad for the simplicity, simplicity of this. Though I have a TI-83 and know how to use it, I don't want to spend the time to actually come up with the math for ranking because it's, oh my god, complicated. But a rad is perfectly fine to think about. And this and this are basically the same thing. They're not really the same thing, they're close. This is an absorbed dose unit. This is sort of an absorbed dose unit. And this equals a rem, more properly... Ren, which is Rengen, equivalent man, or mammal, depending on your opinion. Wikipedia listed as mammal. I thought that was kind of funny. In all my science books and all my classes and, and schooling, it was Rengen, uh, equivalent man. But whatever. Wikipedia can't be wrong. So, um, for, for gamma and beta emissions, this is correct. For alpha, it's different, but don't worry about alpha right now. Okay, let's consider something for a minute. I looked at somebody's YouTube video, who will remain unnamed, and on their Geiger counter it said one, well, no, sorry, it said Rankin per hour, zero, one, two, three, four, something like this. And the dial was pointed at a one, and they were calling it uh, like a Fukushima effect or something like that. Their idea, I guess, was, and since I'm not saying the person, you really have no recourse to yell back at me, person because I'm not saying who you are. But anyway, um, one Rankin per hour is a tremendous amount of radiation. Because you're not going to drop dead. But I don't have anything that can produce that kind of radiation. I have uh, a tenth of a microcurie check sources, two of them. Together I could not produce that much radiation. That's a hell of a lot of radiation. Now, let's figure this out here. Um, I wrote it down, because I don't usually do this sort of stuff, but one Rankin per hour would be equal to, let me move this, brace this and move it over here. If you had a CDV 710, a 710, 720, 715, something like that, you actually saw one miller, I mean one Rankin per hour, not, not one miller Rankin per hour, but one full Rankin per hour. That would mean that in a one hour period you would be equaling, I have written down right here, 10,000 micro sieverts. 10,000 micro sieverts. My Geiger counter, of course, is uh, calibrated for cesium-137. But if I just look at the micro sievert limit, the, uh, uh, well, not limit, micro sievert range that's listed on it, let me turn it on and set it to micro sieverts. Of course, it's not accurate to use it this way. I think I've said that like a thousand times. But regardless, just for the sake of showing it to you guys, I'll do that. And while I'm here, let me cap my Geiger counter. I'm not using it at this moment. I don't want debris getting into it. Okay. 
If you look carefully, I don't know if you can even see this, but my Geiger counter is at 0 0.134 microsievert per hour. Let's put that up by comparison. 0 0.134 Now, let's do the math. How many times, if I got one Milliranken in my house, my average background is actually 0.14, so that's pretty close. So let's, let's, go with my, let's go with my average. It's only a tiniest little bit, 0.4. That's my average in my house. All right, I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of that on my website. You can look at it at anti-proton.com if you want to see that and see for yourself. All right, we'll take 10,000, 10, thousand microsieverts per hour. You can follow with me and do this math yourself if you want. And I'm just going to divide that number by 0 0.14. If I got one Rankin in my house, one, one Rankin, one full Rankin of radiation, I would be exposed to, this is the dial right here, I would be exposed to seven, 71,428 point five, we'll just call it five seven and end it there. The number goes on a little longer, but I would be experiencing 71,000 times more radiation than background. Oh my God. When I complain about people that see 10,000 or 20,000 counts per minute off of their car when they're doing the little paper towel thing, and I always try to see how, how that seems a bit incredulous, this right here is beyond that. And this is a stupendous amount of radiation to detect. You would not be detecting this. If you went to Chernobyl or Fukushima, to the actual plant, mind you, not the area around it, but the plant, and you walked onto the plant and started walking around the ground, you might detect radiation that high. There are hot spots in Fukushima which are higher than this. That's a well-known fact. But just on the general grounds around the plant, you might pick up this much radiation, okay? You wouldn't find that in the city, this, well, the city near Fuku, the, around Fukushima. You wouldn't find it there. Even though there's high radiation levels, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of high radiation, nobody's doubting that for a minute, but you're not, you're not going to find this high. This is tremendous. This is stupendous. And to pick this up with gamma and beta only from a, an old ionization probe like that, it is ridiculous. You, you, would, you would only have that kind of radiation directly after a nuclear explosion, which is the reason that they made these things in the first place. Or, if you had like a Cobalt-60 check source in your room, and I'm talking like in the multi-curie range, like a huge sucker, okay? If you detected this, don't put up a video up on YouTube talking about the Fukushima effect. Get the hell out of your house, and then to check your unit, make sure it's working correctly. And if it is working correctly, check yourself into a hospital. Because you'd start, you can start detecting blood changes at that point. That's tremendous radiation. Stupendous radiation. Right, and, and milli that's in a millisievert range. That's ten. That's ten millisieverts. Not micro, but millisieverts. That's ten millisieverts in one hour. So no, you're not getting that. You are not getting that. If you go on somebody's website and you see that, you're not getting it. Now, I wanted to stop and show that first because it kind of annoys me. I just I just don't know what to say about that. That's so far... We can debate whether you're getting 5,000 counts per minute off your car, but we can't debate that. If you're getting this, and you could be validly getting this, but if you're getting it, it means that somebody has dropped a bar of uranium in your backyard. It means that the nuclear reactor that you, for whatever reason, own and is in your bedroom has cracked open. It means... <laughs> it's not good. It means that your house is a nuclear power station and you're inside the reactor. Actually, inside the reactor room, I don't know if you'd get this kind of reading. I mean, if you actually went to the core itself, yeah, you could get these kinds of readings. But just walking around in the upper parts of it, you probably wouldn't get a reading this high. So it's actually pretty high. Now, that's what I wanted to discuss because it bugged me. The common units one finds on a Geiger counter are this usually per hour. This looks like a little M, but it's not quite. It's a micro symbol. Microsievert per sievert. It's not a Y, it's an S, it's a V. I wrote it, it looks like I made it look like a V. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. It's a V sievert per hour. Counts per minute and counts per second.
when you don't know what you're detecting, you have no idea what it is, you're just detecting it, you use these. When you know exactly what it is you're detecting and you know and your, your guider counter is calibrated for it, you use these. So, if I had a source disk, if I had a radioactive source disk, this doesn't have one in it right now, but if it did, a source disk of cesium-137, I'm calibrated to cesium-137. SC International Calibration, Radiation Art Inspector EXP, serial number such and such and such, date uh, 9-12, that was, like I said, not that long ago. Reading 50 millirankins per hour, correction factor none. 5 millirankins per hour, correction factor one, none. 0.5 millirankins per hour, correction factor one. In other words, I was already correct, correctly calibrated anyway. Cal factor 100. And of course, my probe also got one too. See? Probe. And I also have my calibration letters. Why? I'll show you this because it has my personal information on it. But the point is, I like to be correct. And that way, if this were a cesium-137 piece, for example, then I could, if this were a level, not you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a piece of rock, but if this contains cesium-137 and I knew it contained it, and then I put my Geiger counter over it, I could then very well know that this reading that I'm seeing on the screen is probably correct. Or I could calibrate my Geiger counter for something else. And that is the nature of how things work. So please, people, don't get alarmed when you see people showing you things like a, a full rank in per hour. Their unit's probably broken. Or they are validly picking that up, but that's God only knows what's happening to them. A freight train with nuclear waste broke down in their backyard. Um, <laughs> uh, alien death ray hit their house. <laughs> Um, realistically speaking, you just wouldn't pick up radiation like that. That's just, that's, that's oh my god, tremendous. Even in Chernobyl, you wouldn't find radiation like that unless you went right up to the plant. If you went into the plant itself, you could probably find ra radiation higher than that, but not, not outside of the plant. Anyway, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and I hope maybe you guys feel a little bit safer. Um, I'm not addressing low-level radiation. I'm not denying Fukushima. I'm not saying any of that stuff. I'm just saying you're not going to find a rank, and that's a hell of a lot of radiation. Bye-bye.